Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another Falconer video. Uh, today's video I want to give a few tips on trapping birds, especially uh, Budios, in the early season. And this uh, got a lot of fun details that I'm going to be doing in coming months, but September, it's a good time to be talking about this right now. If you haven't already, if you could please hit subscribe to my channel, I'd very much appreciate it and I appreciate all the support you all give to this channel. Uh, I've been trying to have a uh, video out every single week and so far I've done really pretty good at that. So. Um, this video, trapping season, I love trapping birds of prey. I think it's an amazing thing. It's an amazing experience to understand their thinking. And uh, that's why I want to have a lot of videos. That's why I wrote a book on it. If you haven't already, you can buy this book, Trapping Essentials. Uh, it's sold at Western Sporting Publications. Uh, I wrote and illustrated this to teach people how to catch birds properly, how to make the traps, how to, the techniques on what to do. But I'm trying to give a lot of other information that I didn't have really room to do in this book in my videos. And so with that in mind, I understand that there's going to be some people watching this, this video. They're going to be like, who cares? Just put out a trap under a bird. What's all the fuss? Why are you going into all the nuances? That's true. Okay. If a bird's hungry enough or it's cold enough, yeah, a bird's going to be like food, bait, trap, catch, blah, blah, blah. Great. That is, that is in my mind, that's the difference between Maybe somebody who's fly fishing versus bait fishing. If you're, you know, they might be like, you know what? I want to catch a trout. I'm going to, here's a hook. Here's a worm. Burp, catch. Yay. Why are you making a big deal about it? Where a fly fisherman might be like, okay, I want to understand. I'm going to take a net and see what's flowing down river. See what kind of particulate matters in the water. What insects and arthropods underwater are floating down based off of the time of day, minute to minute. And I'm going to try to match that. So I get, you know, for some people, they don't go and overthink things. But you know what? Here's the thing. People do not give a lot of details about trapping. It's better than it used to be. That's why I wrote the book, though, because there was no book. There never was a book on how do you trap birds of prey. And I'm like, I want the book available that I wish I had had. I ran into so many problems. I made every mistake you can at, before I started to get things right. And so I like to help people not make some of the mistakes I made and to benefit from some little tidbits of wisdom. So that's my motivation. That's why I hope these kind of things help. And again, I know maybe for some of you, you view it as, ah, uh, you're overthinking. Yeah, but you know what? A, a, a good tip is a good tip. So we ha when we're looking at these things, if you're new to falconry, you go out there and you're just like, hey, I'm going to go find a hawk. You can do that. You can just drive forever. Farm fields are, of course, a great place to find. Farm fields are usually filled with rodents, which are cyclical, up and down. Populations go up and down, just like jackrabbit populations are high for three years and then crash for a decade. Same thing. You can have a field that has so many voles, if you have 20 hawks literally hunting the same field, and one field over on either direction, not a single bird. Uh, that happens. You have populations go up and down. And if you can find that honeypot of a, of a field every year, you know, it'll change which one it is. It's always good to find. I call friends in, in different valleys. Where have you seen them? Have you seen any here? I always try to do that. But that aside, I want you to know something in the early season. In the early season, food is plentiful. Birds are usually kind of fat. They're not overly motivated. When you put out a trap, any trap is suspicious compared to just a free range rodent. And there's got to be a reason for them to go down. They've got to get over their suspicion. Hunger is a quick way to get them over their suspicion. Uh, cold is a quick way to get them over th their suspicion. If it's below freezing, their body's burning through calories. They're like, uh, suspicious food. I don't care. I'm starving. But not in the early season. For most areas, September, October, still pretty, pretty warm. So uh, that in mind, which bird you find and how you target them can matter. So I want to talk about preference of purchase. Uh, 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 most budios, so you're like red-tailed hawks in particular, but swains and hawks, frugianous hawks, rough-legged hawks, red-shouldered hawks, all of these, they are, they like to hunt from a perch, preferably. A tree, a telephone pole, a power line. They just want to sit, conserve energy, and just look around, not burning many calories. Oh, there's a vole. Pff, and go down on it. That's what they want to do. And, you know, you can put out underneath any of those. I will do videos in the coming weeks and months to show specifics on how to put out a trap. Like some people are like, I just, meh. there's a lot to it. There is a lot to it. And I want to kind of give you my formulas of distance, how far, and even walkout setups. But that's not this video. This video, I just want to say, 
we it's really easy understanding that Budios like to hunt from a perch with a vantage point. It's easy to just be dismissive and think, a perch is a perch. Who cares? They just landed on the one they landed on. It's got a good view. I don't know. They, they are multi-generational perches that are fought over. Uh, you in an area you could have a big field where hey it's a farm field surrounded by trees and maybe running through the middle there's giant power lines and telephone poles as well maybe there's telephone poles running along on the side and you might just think yeah it perches a perch but for reasons beyond just a good view reasons we don't even always understand because we don't know what's going on in their head you will find geez this one perch year after year after year birds will always be on that one and you never see them on this one or this one right next to it this one for whatever reason they just they like it it's got something they, they want about it some advantage and they will fight over it they will squabble over dominance for a good hunting perch uh we regularly see that haggard birds which are birds older than one year that have survived multiple years will dominate those if they are there they'll be like this is mine i i've been youngling you know and they'll they'll fight for it but even within that migrations kind of happen in waves that overlap and so you can have a, a bird that got there earlier a first year bird a passage bird that you can trap and it's like i got this good perch and then these newbies come in a week later and they're like oh i want that perch too bad oh so what what does this have to do with anything the birds with the really highly productive perches are often uh more skittish and better fed they, they have the most productive perch to hunt from. And again, we don't just being high and having a view is only part of it. We do not know all of the reasons of, of why certain perches are more productive. But one thing that I have seen across the board uh, with a high percentage rate is that really, really tall perches in the center of a field, you almost never trap a bird off of. Uh, it will never rephrase that. You almost never trap a budio off of. Now, again, I'm talking in the warmer months. I'm not talking about when it's zero degrees. Okay, those tall perches usually those birds are more skittish. Usually they are well fed, and, and being fatter, they look at your trap and they're like, "I'm not going down on that. I, I, why would I leave my perch? I don't need to leave my perch anyways because I'm so fat. I'm fine. I got enough calories for the day. And even if I did, I for whatever reason have an advantage from this perch. I don't need to go after that." suspicious looking trap uh and so usually it is the lower perches whether it's a phone pole a power line or a tree it's usually the ones that are closer to the road uh they're lower so you cannot scan as far you have to think about perception and i'll talk a lot about this with bait vis bait visibility in future videos but you got to think if you have even a short crop in the farmer's field a uh, stubble from a cornfield or alfalfa that's only you know six seven eight inches tall but if you have row after row after row after row of that and you have a vole coming out of its burrow looking around here a low perch maybe can't see a higher perch can see over i know that just that's not brain surgery clearly the higher the perch the further of a vantage point you have but that means usually the birds on that edge of the the road on those lower perches of trees usually are at a disadvantage they are usually hungrier and they might be more prone to bump because you're so close to them and i will get into that in how we put out a trap in later videos but my principle is i in the early season recommend you do not target going after budios that are on the really tall perches in the center of fields you're far better off to look for those birds that just came down from the mountains or just came into your region that are like, oh, I'll take this lesser perch that's close to the road. Statistically, you're more likely. And again, nature will break any rule you try to make. We try to kind of overlay ideas and consistencies that we observe to help us better understand nature, but nature is going to do whatever it wants. But that being said, I've been a falconer for decades i literally wrote the book on trapping and that is one thing that i have witnessed is that going closer to the road on the much lower perches those birds are typically hungrier and less suspicious of a trap you just got to make sure you don't bump them in the process so uh keep that in mind keep that put that in your imaginary bag of tricks and and advice when you go out trapping i can have a lot more videos with tidbits and information on 
techniques to help you have success in trapping many different birds. But again, this one applies mostly to Budios and I hope you find it useful. Uh, please let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And again, I'm in Utah. It's a big, broad world. Let me know if you have had in your region a very different experiences with the Budios in your area. I'd love to know. I love sharing these experiences and hearing yours as well. So I uh, hope this helps. And as always, happy hawking.